Okay, now that we've set the problem of the uh, of the um, total Lagrangian formulation, we've, we've we've gone through sort of the the picture that we're trying to solve. I want to talk through now the conservation equation. So we're going to basically cover conservation of mass. Uh, we call it conservation of momentum, but it's really more of a momentum balance. And then finally, uh, conservation of energy. We're just going to sort of give those equations uh, as we move forward. So let's talk. Start with conservation of mass. Okay, so let's think about this. Uh, we know that for the initial density at some point x, this material point, right? And we're using x because we're in the total Lagrangian formulation. We know that that's the mass of that uh, at that location divided by the volume, right? And of course, this is in a limit, right? But you get the idea. And then if we had, so this is in the, the uh, reference or the original. Maybe initial. Okay, and then in the current configuration, we could write that um, uh, rho again of x, right? So that point is going to be equal to m over v, right? So what is that going to be equal to? What is m over v? Well, we can use a chain rule and say that must be m over v naught times v naught over V, right? That gives me the same thing. And this looks just like we had up here. Let's call this equation one, call this equation two, right? This is a uh, row naught uh, evaluated at X. And how about this? Well, hopefully you remember that the, the, this ratio of volumes is really what the Jacobian is telling you. This happens to be the current volume in the denominator. So this is actually one over j the Jacobian, right? And so if I go ahead and write this out, I have uh, that rho naught x is going to be equal to j times rho of x, right? Okay, so how about for, but let's, let's now think through, let's call this equation 3. And let's recall that for 1d we defined the following in the previous lecture, if you remember. All right, we said that the Jacobian, we're going to try to keep it um, in, in a volume form. So it was A over A naught times F, where F was our deformation gradient, right? Call that equation 4. And I can just substitute 4 into 3 now. Okay. And when I do that, I get um, that I can write A naught times rho naught uh, is going to be equal to A times F times rho, okay? This is our conservation of mass equation. Okay, so there's the first, um, first of our conservation equations. So now let's go ahead and move on to a momentum balance. So let's call this uh, number two. We'll call it a momentum balance, or you can, if you like, you can call it momentum conservation, but it's not really conservation. Okay, and we we develop this in the same way that we've done in the past, right? So uh, let's just let's go ahead and take some uh, differential volume of or this is of length now d x capital X, and uh, coming off this back surface, we're going to have uh, force evaluated at the material point x, and on this front. Uh, surface, we're going to have force evaluated at the material point x plus delta, uh, from x plus dx rather. And uh, we also have potentially a body force coming in the same direction that we'll define. We'll call this uh, B, which we're going to define as a body force per unit mass. And what we're going to say is that the sum of the forces this is only in one direction, so there's nothing to talk about besides uh, x direction. The sum of the forces is going to be equal to mass times acceleration, right? Which must be m u double dot, right? Let's call that um, uh, equation six. Okay. So now let's go ahead and write the sum of our forces. Okay. So I have, uh, and and let me just say here. That, that we have uh, some A naught, right? 
That's our cross-sectional area of where, wherever we're at. Um, so our sum of our forces on the in the positive direction is going to be uh, f of x plus dx. And then we're going to have a force in the other direction minus f of x, right? And then I need uh, to also con have the contribution of the body force, right? So I have the body force term, but I want this is a per unit mass. And so I need to somehow get the the total force, right? Because this isn't on a per unit anything basis, right? Okay, so how do I do that? Well, let's think about this. If I want, I, I have a volume. Volume is going to be A naught times DX. A naught DX, right? This is my volume. Times my density, rho naught. And this whole thing is my mass, right? Times B. And then on the other side, I need m. I already wrote the mass, so this must be still rho naught a naught dx times then u double dot. Call that equation 7. And now what do we want to do? Well, now we want to, to sort of do a little bit of algebraic work on this. Let's go ahead and divide this equation by dx, since I have this dx term here and here. And then take the limit as dx goes to 0. Okay, So that's what we're going to do next. So divide by dx and take the limit as dx goes to 0. Okay, so this first term is I'm going to have this in my numerator and dx in my denominator. So I have f of x plus dx minus f of x divided by dx. Okay, that thing there. I'm going to put that in parentheses because I need to take the limit as dx goes to 0. Right, and then I have this term which I can just divide out the dx. Rho naught a naught times b is equal to rho naught a naught times u double dot. Right? Let's call that equation 8. Okay, I, I'm going to observe that this first term here is the formal definition of a derivative, so this looks like the partial of f uh, with respect to x. Right? So, uh, can write that observe the first term as a derivative, right? And so then I can write that uh, del f del x uh, plus rho naught a naught times b is equal to rho naught a naught times u double dot. Call that equation 9. So now what I want to do is I want to recall how we define the force uh, uh, with our Lagrangian variables. Uh, recall that the force uh, in Lagrangian variables, which we defined last class, or last lecture, uh, is given as follows. Specifically, uh, we want to say that uh, F is going to be, what's the force equal to? Well, it's going to be equal to the nominal stress P times a naught, the cross-sectional area, right? So then we can write, uh, so this should be as given by, okay? Uh, so it's, it's given by this, so we can write equation 9 as follows. Okay, so uh, I'm going to now go back to my comma notation. So we have P A naught, comma X, right? So that means the partial with respect to X, plus rho naught A naught B, is going to be equal to rho naught a naught u double dot, right? Let's call this equation 10. Sometimes people will call it the momentum equation, uh, but it's really the equation of motion. Okay? Oftentimes in the problems we're going to solve in solid mechanics, maybe we don't care about the motion, we just want to solve the equilibrium problem. So we can specialize equation 10 uh, to equilibrium. How do we do that? Uh, by taking the acceleration u double dot to be zero. So we're, we end up with uh, p a naught, right? Our our nominal for our nominal stress times a naught, partial with respect to x plus rho naught a naught times b is equal to zero, right? This is our formal equilibrium equation. 
Let's call that equation 11. And also you can note that if uh, the cross-sectional area of the rod is, is constant, we could pull out the a naughts because there's no partial uh, there. Uh, and uh, it would just become the partial of the stress with respect to x uh, plus rho naught uh, times b is equal to zero would be that. Okay, So let me just remind you, this is the equilibrium equation. Okay, the last thing we want to talk about is conservation of energy, and that should be fairly quick. So number three is conservation of energy. And this is a sort of a simplified version. We're only going to be concerned about the, the work, the internal work done by the stress, okay? So here, let's just say, consider the internal work uh, done by some uh, stress uh, P. Okay, and we would then write that as the W internal is equal to, um, we'll say the integral of, right, if this would be, uh, if this was in the, the Cauchy form, it would be sigma d epsilon. We still have defined, it's we have defined epsilon. It's not quite the same as when we were using the Cauchy stress, right? This is now um, with respect to, right, remember we had defined epsilon last time. This is partial u with respect to x, right? Um, so, we also would like to probably put the, the work form in terms of unit mass, whereas this is going to give me per unit volume. So we want to um, uh, go ahead and, and multiply this times 1 over rho naught. So when we do that, uh, this, this is now per unit mass. So I'll just remind you, W int is per unit mass. Okay, let's go ahead and call this. Um, equation 12. All right, uh, via the chain rule, we can write the following. We can say that uh, W internal is going to be equal to 1 over rho naught times the integral of P. And here we take P to be constant throughout the, the, the work being done. Uh, and then it becomes d epsilon dt times dt, right? And where this quantity here is epsilon dot, so this becomes 1 over rho naught times the integral of p epsilon dot dt. Uh, we call this equation 13. Now let's go ahead and take the time derivative. Uh, and when we note that, we'll note that this, we basically are just going to remove this integral. Okay, So taking the time derivative, right? we can write that w int, and now this is w int dot, can be equal to uh, 1 over rho naught times p epsilon dot. Or if you like, we can write that rho naught times the, the rate of internal work is equal to the st uh, nominal stress p times the strain rate. Okay? Call that equation 14. So this, this is one form of our uh, conservation of energy. Right? It's in rate form. We also sometimes, it's depending on how we have uh, uh, developed our constitutive laws, we may not want to represent uh, here a strain. We may want to represent the uh, deformation gradient. right? And so, so if we do that, let's go ahead and recall the definition there. So recall the relationship uh, between uh, the strain and F as we defined it last lecture. And we said, right, that epsilon was equal to uh, F minus 1. What that means is that epsilon dot is going to be equal to F dot, right? And we call that equation 15. And so we can substitute 15 into 14, right? And we end up with rho naught W int dot is equal to P times F dot, right? And we can call this equation uh, 16. Okay? So either of those boxed equations are a statement of our conservation of energy. It just says that the work done by the system uh, is related to the, the, the work done by the, the some stress P. Okay? So we, we'll come back to those uh, later on, but I wanted, to develop, I wanted to develop them here for you so we can work with them. As with we did with the um, uh, the static 
linear elastic case, the relevant equation that we're going to be solving for when we develop a finite element solution is uh, still going to be the conservation of momentum or that uh, those equations of motion or the equilibrium equations. That's what we're going to solve for. And then we'll use both conservation of mass and conservation of energy as needed to make relevant substitutions uh, throughout.